after posting with the title "Paying the Price with Her Life for the Future," I would have already posted again three more times in a row. God had spoken. However, when I was about to post them, I was prevented by the Holy Spirit through incidents. If we are sensitive, certainly we will be guarded in order not to violate the holiness of God's Spirit. That's why it is important to have a fear of God. The first occasion that was prevented when I was going to pose. To share about differentiating God's wrath, and that moment, the Holy Spirit spoke through the incident that happened to my pet when he came from behind without me knowing, and all of a sudden, jump to approach me, causing his leg to be sprained. Now, what I captured to understand was, regarding the wrath of God, if I make it to be shared publicly and bluntly. There will be violation of God's holiness, like what happened to Moses, by the power of God to reflect His anger publicly in front of God's people. Thus, it will become a stumbling block for those who belittle the holiness of God's Spirit if they do not believe. So I cancel it. I did not post it. I thought it's okay. If I cannot discuss about the wrath of God, as that will violate God's holiness, however, I was again revealed about a sinful act that makes God angry to the max. After it was finished, too, just needing some editing, I firstly brought it before the Holy Spirit, whether or not being permitted to be posted. That night, I was given a dream. I was shown that all of that will be in vain. They will not listen before experiencing the incidents themselves. So one more time, I cancelled the posting, and for the third time, I have been revealed. After I was done working on it, suddenly there was a problem with my computer. There was something that prevented me from posting it. Since there is a question from one of our brethren about how to become a doer, as a worshiper in spirit and in truth, until this morning when I woke up from sleep, I was filled with praise song with a lyric, "I lift up my hand before this era passes." As I recall, there is no praise song that I memorized with a lyric like that. Please read Numbers twenty twelve to thirteen. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because ye believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and He was sanctified in them. If Moses had expressed his anger towards God, his annoyance in front of God's people in public, and so because of Moses' transgression towards God's holiness that he was rejected, so was also with the mission of Elijah. It became imperfect. Instead of declaring the word of truth to God's chosen people. Elijah declared judgment and God's wrath, so that it was not in accordance to God's plan. There was no sacrifice from this earth that was pleasing to God. Thus, the veil in God's temple was not torn. The work of God became undone again. They did not become God's temple on this earth. Therefore, when Jesus came into this world, he then took also the spirit of Elijah and the spirit of Moses, became one inside him, inside Jesus, in order for the spirit of Moses and Elijah to be perfected together. When Jesus became the pleasing sacrifice, so that making Moses and Elijah 
also became pleasing to live before the Holy Spirit because of Jesus. Now, why could this transgression happen to Moses and to Elijah? The truth is, at that time they had not yet understood about the will and the plan of the Holy Spirit. That is why, to become the worshippers in spirit and in truth, we certainly must first experience the process of being melted in the Word of God. Afterwards, we become the dwelling place for the Holy Spirit and so become the true worshipper. As for Moses and Elijah alone, in order to become pleasing to live by the Spirit before the Holy Spirit, they must first be melted in Jesus in the Word of God. Until when Jesus came, together they became a pleasing sacrifice. The union of Moses and Elijah and Jesus, as seen by the apostles, only then a person can become a worshipper in spirit and in truth. After Moses and Elijah lifted up their hands willingly and surrendered, being melted in the truth of God's word that was in Jesus, becoming the meaning of sacrifice, ending their times as God's messengers perfectly. Please read Revelation 15, 1 to 4. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw as it were the sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. There is a title in there. It's called The Song of Those Who Have Won. And afterwards, underneath those verses, the title is The Seven Angels with the Seven Bones of God's Wrath. Now, that's what the voice of the Spirit of Moses was, which I can also feel in my inner being and in my heart. It's like a song. After his sacrifice was pleasing, only then Moses became worthy and pleasing in accordance with a worshipper in spirit and in truth. Thus, it is not easy to become worshippers in spirit and in truth to come before the presence of the Holy Spirit, even more so for those who have followers as mentors. They must first tear down their holy temple to become examples for their followers, whereas to tear down a temple, a place of worship that is built by human hands, in itself is not easy for them to be willing to tear it down now how much more what is meant by Jesus? The holy temple that must be torn down is their logic in understanding the relationship with God, their principle of faith, their concept of their ministry, also their liturgy, and the laws of their act of worship. That holy temple is already so solidly built and so strong that it's impossible to be torn down. So the process to tear down the holy temple in order to become a pleasing sacrifice for the spirit and truth, indeed that process instead becomes the main opponent for priests, prophets, pastors, mentors, and clergy. Though people who believe in Christ when they come before the presence of the Holy Spirit, can experience being filled and worship in spirit. 
That is because there is Jesus' sacrifice that guarantees them. However, in order for them to be able to enter into the period in God's favor, especially those who become members, they must dare to tear down their holy temple in order for them to be in accordance to the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. Thus, use the times of being guaranteed to make you become like a candle that lights, but slowly melts until it all burns out. To be in the process that is in accordance with sacrifice, they must be willing to stop from all their activities. If they have followers whom they shepherd, it must be the mentors, the shepherds, the pastors who are first to become the pleasing sacrifice, for their followers to be able to follow the examples. Now those mentors are the ones who must first become like Jesus. However, there is no human being who can make himself to become pleasing like Jesus, because in order to be pleasing for the Holy Spirit, without the person being melted in the Word of God first, it's impossible. At most, they can only become like Moses when he violated God's holiness. He was rejected by God. Or like Elijah, uncompromised with the wickedness so that he was rejected by God's people and became bitter. Thus, there is no choice if wanting to be in God's favor, they must be in union in sacrifice, which is the Lamb who was slain, to become the example for their followers. When they dare to live in the Spirit, they will not be left to starve, will not be left thirsty and barren. Though their holy temple is torn down and also died, what becomes stronger more and more is they will experience the leading of the Holy Spirit and His truth, and it will make them believe even more that cannot be shaken anymore. When there is already someone who can be an example, who has become like Jesus, whom they can see, there is a living witness who is like Jesus, for real, who is their shepherd who becomes the witness of a living example which is from the process of a servant until it becomes the process of a sacrifice of the Lamb. So they enter God's rest, not due to death, not died, but because of drown in becoming a worshiper in spirit and truth. Truly, those are the 24 elders who are in the book of Revelation. They are the winners and the worshipers in spirit and truth as a sacrifice, but they are more and more live in truth. So I would like to share a testimony. When I was still being processed as a worshiper, lacking in understanding about the Word of God and had not been melted in truth, I solely still depended on the leading of the Holy Spirit through the gift of the Spirit. However, there were some brethren who followed my footsteps. In the beginning, it was because they saw the gift of the Spirit that I received, which were all kinds of dreams and visions, even the gift of revelation. So they became interested, and I led them to be courageous, to believe 100% to go in and come in the presence of God the Spirit. One by one, indeed, gave me the questions, then how do I worship? Then how do I listen to the Word of God? The questions were always, then how, how? And even how they must explain to their relatives. Even more so, a question on how to explain to their church community. Remember that in that situation at that time, the concept of going to church and doing ministry had become a law and a command that was like the law by Moses that came down from God himself. 
so that many kinds of demands came not to them, but the demands to them all came to me. The churches did not see that the people's soul was brought closer to God, but instead what they feared is if they lose something. Because logically I certainly be accused of wanting to open a church service myself. By stumbling over because of their own disobedience and lack of faith, yet I continue to hold their hands until they experience for themselves that there is power in God's every word through dreams and visions that they have received. The gift of the Spirit that they have never experienced before, much more than when they do act of worship in church obediently. They are already rebuked and prepared in advance before they make mistakes. They have been led before they face many kinds of problems in their household or their workplace. They are even entrusted with all kinds of revelations. Please read Hebrews 8, 1-6. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the Son. We have such an high priest, who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary, and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shewed to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. If Jesus already worked to tear the veil, to make it open, then the subsequent relay is that we have to follow Jesus' footsteps, bringing a pleasing sacrifice for the occurrence of a union with the Lamb of God in order to become pleasing, in order to become like Jesus as a mentor or as a shepherd to give the example. And it is not only to be like Aaron, those priests always petition for forgiveness for themselves and for their congregation. It is because no one dares to step in through the veil that has been torn out. Experiencing God's day of rest is not only by not sinning anymore, but when one has become holy by the Word of God, then it is precisely the appropriate time that is in accordance with sacrifice. At the time when they dare to take off their holy temple to be torn down. In order to be rebuilt by the Holy Spirit without the involvement of human hands, enter into a time in God's favor, reaching the grace of living by the Spirit and for the Spirit, the first resurrection the unity of living with the Lamb of God. Since indeed, the pastors or the priests are the ones who become the veil for the followers instead, so that the church today is like the holy temple in the Old Testament, and it is also like the ark of worship built by Moses that was led by Aaron the priest inside it. The pastors became the veil that obstruct the people behind them, so that God's people more and more do not understand the way to go in, in order to become pleasing to God, and until they lose track of the correct example. In order for those behind them can continue to have a living example, for the chains not to be broken and lose track, while no one dares to experience. Now what causes it? until it can make the chains to be broken and lose the footsteps of Jesus. 
they must defeat the beast, which is their mortal character, because as worshippers they still depend on their physical condition, their timing, their place, and their act of worship to become the number. Believing and obeying because of idolizing, thus. That is their idol statue, because to become a winner, it is not only singing the song of his servant Moses, but must also voicing the song of the Lamb of God, according to the sign of sacrifice. Please read John 4:23 to 26. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto Him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When He is come, He will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am He. One of the testimonies that I experienced at that time in the leading of the Holy Spirit, before it became understanding in the Word of God, so it would still become a personal experience. Through this dream and vision that I have shared in detail in the past, in order for me to understand, I was given the image and what was in God's heart. In that dream, I was walking with one of our brethren, who followed my footsteps. We both were in the middle of a journey when we passed an elite area. As we were crossing in front of a very magnificent building, in front of the building, there was someone already waiting, a very authoritative elderly person. The impression was like a chief of servant. Who on purpose has been waiting for us? His hair is white, wearing a white suit. He offered an elite job to our brethren, who was with me, so that this brethren was a bit interested in it. So she stopped to think about the offer and delay her walk. I then left. I have no right to prevent her because when someone is being chosen, that person also has the right to choose. Whether to continue to follow me or to accept that offer, with a sad heart I walk away slowly, so that if she regrets it, she can still chase after me before I turn around the corner, and so she will definitely lose track of me. At the moment I am about to turn the corner, she runs to chase after me before she loses track. Now the breaking of a change of Jesus' footsteps is like what is being illustrated through the vision and dream about me and that of my friend. So do Jesus with the servants of God, whom He considered as His friends. The cause of the change to be broken is because when Jesus' friends are called but refused. In order for them to be in accordance with the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, in order to be pleasing, because at the same time it comes also what become a golden opportunity, an offer to choose to become a sultan or conglomerate, so that their lives can be like kings or continue to become honorable and respected priests. So it was also what I have testified in the past sharing about how Jesus, during his ministry in the Spirit, through the dream and vision that I received, whenever Jesus walks, all those whom he passes by automatically will follow Jesus, and all of them are changed to be clothed in white robes. But Jesus continues to walk until he approaches me, and I bow down to praise him. My hands are lifted up high until Jesus is raised up, and Jesus says, "There is half of matters that I still have to work on." Now that means we who are still living in this world, who are holding the relay stick, are to be an example for those behind us to become like Jesus. 
so that they also be courageous because they see us who have become the doer until willing, because their holy temple had been torn down. Thus, we are the ones who must continue to become a holy temple for the Holy Spirit who is on this earth, as the true worshippers in spirit and truth, as the bride of the Lamb who is pleasing. Please read Revelation 21, 1-5. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. In order to be able to become a part in the new heaven and the new earth, absolutely it must be through Jesus. Firstly to be processed, sanctified by the living word, when those who are pleasing, who are being processed to walk the way of the cross until the union with sacrifice of the Lamb of God occurs, find favor to become his throne, those are the ones who is part of the New Jerusalem. 144,000 people who have been redeemed from the earth, they are alive but are still not real. As the worshiper, in spirit and in truth, not in a physical way, but from their mind, who always on guard and stand by, in accordance to the worshippers in spirit and in truth. Amen.